I just have difficulty sleeping, getting enough rest. I can be sleeping, I can be very tired, and I'll just wake up drenched in sweat, even if it's cold, just nightmares at night overthinking. If I go to a place and there's an older man, usually older men, or just a man, and maybe in conversation or something, a joke, or they compliment me, or maybe they even try to just touch me, like how you're laughing and you just, it makes me very, very angry and I'll just snap at you, I'll stop talking to you, I'll say something rude to you. They carry themselves and people respect them. I want people to know them for who they are. To know that when you see a girl and maybe you go to a house and this young girl is rude or however they label us, there's most likely a reason behind it. It all started when I was five years old in 2002. I was based in Kano at the time with my family. However, my two sisters, who are much older than I am, were away for university and law school. And my father was mostly out of town for work, except for weekends. I have an uncle who's, the, who's an adopted brother, younger brother to my father. While in transit from Miduguri to Portacot, Portacot back to Miduguri, he would pause at our house in Kano to catch a break, to meet us, just as normally normal family members would come by and spend time. During his visits, when my parents would not be around, or maybe my mom is in the back doing things related to kitchen or washing, or my father's out of the house, he would use that as an opportunity to carry me, put me on his lap, make me perform oral on him and also finger me and even though it was painful especially the fingering i would be begging him to stop please uncle stop it's painful he would shout at me and he would tell me i should shut up i should shut up I'll close my mouth and continue whatever it was he was doing regardless of how painful how much i begged him and he would threaten me that if i ever opened up to anybody about it he would deal with me i never felt safe or confident enough to share things with my family, especially not something like this where an uncle that was very much respected in the house, loved by everyone, was hurting me, especially as he threatened me and made me feel like I was dirty. I had to hold on to this in silence. Uncle Ibro, after we moved from Kano, I had no contact with him until 2008, we were living in Meduguri at this time, and my grandfather, who's my father's father, was ill at the time, so Uncle Ibro came to Meduguri to visit him. However, he did not come to our house. It is a particular neighborhood called Milk Shop. My father was driving Ibro and I, and he went to Milk Shop. Ibro was sitting in front, and I was at the back. At this point, I was about nine or ten years old. My father went out of the car to go and do whatever it was he was doing, leaving just Uncle Ibro and I. Uncle Ibro was looking at me through the rear mirror, and then after my father was out of sight, he began to bring up memories of what he had done. It's like, Shegya. Shegya means bastard, female bastard in Hausa. Nasenkin tuna da abunde ina miki da. I know you remember what I used to do to you. Now sing Abu Bonde Hina I know what you do with boys now. I know you're a harlot. I know you're a slut. I can even see it on your face. And it came out of nowhere. That ride was already uncomfortable for me to just see this man's face. He made me cry. I was begging him to please stop talking to me like that. When my father came back, he just gave an excuse as to why I was crying and I couldn't open up to my father about it. In the same time period, one of my father's former best friends, who is now a professor in Unimed, Dr. David Wapakta, he would come by the house to come and visit. Still at this time, my sisters were away for university and work, so they were not at home. My father was also working out of town, leaving just my mom and I. However, this time around, my mom was sick. She had suffered two strokes, so she had a little bit of damage to her brain and she was half paralyzed. So she was unable to move around conveniently and she had to pee a lot. 
So even if guests would come around, she wouldn't be able to sit with them throughout. So David Wapakta would come the way aunties and uncles would come just to check on us because I was small in primary school. We had house helps that would come and go, so they were not always around. So he would come to the house to visit and then he would bring rubber bands and um, virus that were popular at the time and he would maybe ask me to escort him to his car to collect or when my mom is away maybe to go and ease herself he would do similar things to what my uncle was doing to me he would begin to finger me and play with my chest at the time puberty had not hit yet so i didn't have anything on my chest but he would do that and unlike with my uncle, he did not threaten me. Instead, he just told me I should just keep quiet. I should just be a good girl. And already there was this fear and shame that I had just hearing how people would talk about people that have been with men. I just saw myself as such a person. How can I come and open up now, especially now that my mom is sick and there's just so much happening in the family. I did not see um, David Wapakta until 2014 or so. I was schooling in Joss in secondary school at the time and my father was passing by. Normally when my dad stops by in school, myself and all of my friends will run to him because he will come with provisions or maybe money to give us. So this time it was after church on Sunday, we all ran and then when I reached the parking lot, I just saw David Wapakta and I froze. Normally, I begged my father to stay back. Please don't go, don't go. But that day, I just wanted them to go because just seeing him... Sorry, that means it killed my spirit. Just seeing him, all those memories came back. Now, I was in a Christian school. You know, there's ways that they talk about purity and what ladies should be like. So all my life hearing that, now coming to a Christian school, hearing that I am unpure and dirty, I just, it just brought back memories and it made me very angry and withdrawn for a bit. In 2019, I was in my room one night and I was having a serious meltdown. I decided to send a Facebook message to the first person, that is Uncle Ibrahim. He had sent me a friend request on Facebook. I had accepted it. He sent me happy birthday one year and I told him thank you. But I did not mean it. And I'm like, why am I having to pretend to respect these people and be nice to them, to answer them, to pretend everything is okay? So after I had finished crying, I reached out to him on Facebook telling him that I remember everything. And about how this still affects me so dates because it was late at night but I just couldn't sleep that's how nights are for me I had not forgiven him and that I would open up to the family soon I'm just waiting to muster up the courage and he sent me a message that I found really insensitive telling me to just let bygones be bygones that he has already buried it in his past why am I still holding on to it I should just forgive and forget it he made me so angry because how can you say that to me after having damaged a lot of my life i have serious problems connecting to people starting and maintaining friendships while in secondary school as i mentioned i used to think about this a lot it got to the point that i was contemplating suicide for a while even also in university there will be times that the thoughts will just come to my mind where I'll just be feeling low, and maybe while I'm feeling low, my academics will now come down. So altogether, I'll just feel useless, and I'll just be thinking. In September of 2020, before leaving Yobe State, I was with my dad. I told him I needed to talk to him about something. So I told him about it, and he was in so much shock. He couldn't believe it, because Ibro, Uncle Ibro, in the family is more respected than some of my father's blood brothers because of how he carries himself to be in the community how could he have done such a thing to my father given how close they used to be and my father's former best friend they'd been friends for over four decades if i'm not mistaken and after my mom's passing in 2016 my sisters and i have been trying to become closer in relationships so 
Last year, I was talking to Mami on the phone. One of my relatives was telling me about something an older man had done to her or tried to do to her. So I was telling my sister about it. And then I broke down on the phone and I told her what had happened to me as a child. I was afraid because I didn't know how she was going to take it. All these years of shame and fear not being able to share with her. She was in so much shock. She called my other sister and she told her. So I told them I just want justice. I don't want to sweep this under the carpet. Because Ibro is a teacher in a primary school in Dutse. He has access to children. David is a professor in the university. God knows what he's doing to the girls there for their grades, for their marks. He's an elder in um, EYN Polo, is uh, a church in Meduguri. What is he doing there? They carry themselves and people respect them. I want people to know them for who they are. To know that when you see a girl and maybe you go to a house and this young girl is rude or however they label us, there's most likely a reason behind it. I was, I'm fortunate enough to have a very supportive sister. Zainab has helped me out. My father too has helped me out. In order to find justice, since there were no witnesses at the time, we had meetings with um, Ibro and David, separate meetings. The one with David was in March and the one with Ibro was in April 2021. For David Wapata, he lied. He was looking at me trying to intimidate me but fortunately i don't know if it's to say fortunately now i'm just more confident and maybe more less afraid we kept going back and forth back and forth then he started apologizing is sorry you want sorry no, no remorse at all is it sorry you want sorry i said no i don't want your sorry because what are you apologizing for if you're not going to say what you did then i don't want your sorry so you know said yes I did it after almost, I think, one hour, 20-something minutes. He admitted to what he did, still no remorse. My father told him to go and confess to God and to try to solve, solve or talk about it with me, maybe in the future, but for today, let's leave it, because they kept asking if I had forgiven him. I said no. For Ibrahim, it was the same. He was lying at first, then I brought out the Facebook, the evidence on Facebook. I said, what are you, what were you apologizing for here? I read it out. Then he began to say that it's the work of the devil. It was his youthfulness. He used to come to the house as an adult. He was either in his 30s or 20s. For Ibrahim, we are yet to start pursuing courts because we want to take things one step at a time. Court has been very exhausting in my degrees. Financially draining is very discouraging for me. My sister Zainab has been the one encouraging me to continue because there are just things, days I'm just like, can we please stop this? There's no point. I'm not going to get justice. It's not just the legal system itself. It's also what outsiders are doing to try to, or what outsiders were doing to try to end the case. Relatives that thought the story was embarrassing let's just not talk about it one person had called me and the first thing she asked me was why are you just talking about it now and I said if I had spoken about it then the things that you people are doing now how would that have helped me she said now that people in the community know is that not enough I heard you're taking it to court Having people like this around me has been very draining and discouraging. Um, but however, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful and I'm very thankful for people like my sister and activists, journalists that are helping out. I'm hoping that somehow something will be done and that I'll get justice. Up to today, sometimes I think, why didn't I? Because for, for, for both of them, it happened more than once, more than twice, different occasions. Why didn't I do something about it? Why didn't I say something? Why just now? Sometimes I blame myself for that. Maybe I could have spoken up, I could have shouted, done something. I don't know. I feel very upset sometimes with my family. Why were they not there? Even though really they had their own things going on, they did not intend for this to happen. I, 
I struggle up to today with sleeping. I struggle with maintaining relationships. I have started receiving therapy now. Some days are better than others because up to now, sometimes I go in and just talking about this, it makes me relieve the things that have happened. Sometimes I hear things, maybe the way um, the therapist will say, maybe something like broken. And then I'll think about it, I'll be like, here, hell, you are broken. I feel as if people don't see me and my pain. I feel angry when relatives hear about it and the first thing they have to say is, how could they have done this to your father? It makes me feel as if I'm just some object, like they, they just did this, like, oh, they stole your father's goods, as if me, myself, I don't have emotions, I don't think about these things. I would like for parents and for children to be able to talk more among themselves because I feel if I had if I had the confidence to speak to my family members, maybe things would have been a little bit different for children, maybe watching this, boys and girls, because it happens to everyone. If it happens, you should not feel ashamed or dirty because it's not your fault. Because it's not your fault. The only thing you can do instead of bottling all of this and keeping it to yourself is to talk about it. Because when you talk about it, it takes away from them takes away and it adds to you, it gives you comfort. As for my love life, even though I've dated in the past, being able to date someone, open up to somebody is very difficult because if I'm in a place maybe and a guy is to approach me, most times, no, it's just no, I don't even want to get to know you. Maybe you have to be persistent or try not to come up as interested or too interested because if I begin to see that maybe you're interested if you come direct or something things that should make maybe my friends will get excited that oh this person came to me and to, it just irritates me it makes me feel as if you don't have good intentions for me I'm trying to think differently now but for now that's just how I see it I want justice because Ibrahim Dia has children and he teaches in a police primary school in Duse. I'm sure he has about two or three kids that are younger than I am. He would not want this to happen to them. I want justice because David Wapakta, who is teaching in Unimed Meduguri, has grandchildren and children. He and his wife, who go to court together, I know they don't want this to happen to their daughters. I know they don't want this to happen to their grandchildren. If they don't want these type of things to happen to their kids, then they should be able to pay for what they did to me.